Not surprisingly, there are recession fears at the biggest U.S. banks. J.P. Morgan and Citigroup expect a mild recession starting the end of 2023. Now, when you look at the numbers, as reported by the big banks, they're still making a lot of money. You have J.P. Morgan saying that their return on tangible common equity, which is a measure of profitability, is 20 percent, which is more than its medium term target. You also have J.P. Morgan's Bank of America's and Citigroup's headcount rising. But listen, the banks are largely saying expenses might be under pressure. And that's because labor costs are still high. And it ties into the broader story in the economy. It's that even though inflation is cooling, it's still sticky. And the cost tied to labor is still part of that. You might hear bankers griping about bonuses dropping. But remember, compensation costs are rising because headcount is still higher at many of these firms. Let's keep an eye on it throughout the year, because if revenue is under pressure, that's when you start to see more pressure on jobs, too. Do you think that's now, likely? Our base case is that you're going to get a recession in 2023. That will allow uh, wage pressures to moderate, and then that the Fed can actually cut rates in 2024. Uh, my best guess is the Fed are going to bring rates down to about 2.5% by the end of 2024, which of course is broadly in line with what the market's pricing now, give or take. A little bit louder. Yeah, so um, our view uh, has been for some time that you will confront a recession in 2023. Uh, it looked like late last year that it could occur at the start of the year, um, so in the first quarter. Uh, but the data inflected uh, you know, higher over January and February, and, and we saw some improvement. And so our current baseline is that you'll you'll enter a recession in the third quarter of of 2023. We suspect that that will be uh, about a one and a half percent peak to trough contraction in real GDP over the course of about four quarters or so. Um, that's about equivalent to what occurred in the 1990 91 episodes. Finance's own Josh Schaefer. Josh. Yeah, Diane, so it's been interesting as this data has started to come in, even just this morning with the PCE, PCE. data, mm -hmm. more and more people are still projecting that recession, but pushing it out a little bit fur uh, further. So Oxford Economics, who we speak with a lot here, Yahoo Finance, and are constantly quoting, now saying they see that recession that they saw in Q3 out into Q4. And when you take a look at the data as a whole that we saw this week, you saw GDP move up, right? We thought it was 1.1% growth in the first quarter. Turns out it was 1.3% growth in the first quarter. When you take a look at jobless claims and what we've seen from that fraudulent data in Massachusetts now that they've fixed that problem, there's actually less people filing jobless claims than we initially anticipated. Let's get some reaction to all of this. We're joined by Lakshman Nachathan. He is Economic Cycle Research Institute co-founder. So, Services were supposed to be the, the part of the economy that still is really strong. Yep. So what, what does this and tell us? And they're slowing. <laughs> yeah. And they're slowing, right? So yeah. yes and yes. They mm -hmm. are, they typically are a stronger part of the economy, particularly in this post-COVID period where you have this um, like YOLO, you only live once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want experiences, I want leisure, I want hospitality, I want all that stuff uh, in, in lieu of goods. And um, that's been kind of keeping people on the, um, hey, we're fine, you know, what me worry kind of uh, attitude. And now you're seeing, I think, at least, you know, this is one data point, uh, a couple data points, but you're seeing this deceleration uh, in services consumption. One thing, um, stepping back from today's number, right? One thing I, I don't think people really realize, and, and this is just from studying recessions for decades, my whole professional life, and, um, and, 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 and looking back, services um, and consumer spending mm -hmm. uh, typically are okay as a recession starts. Interesting. That is, I think the, the received wisdom is that, oh yeah, that has to fall apart and then there's a recession. Right. Totally not the case. Uh, what happens is you can walk into a recession with a couple of percent growth in services or consumption, mm -hmm. and it only so, so it kind of slows down and goes to around zero 
inside a recession. So is the setup this time drastically different than what we've seen in the past? Probably not. You know, those are, I think it's uh, Sir John Templeton, isn't it? Uh, the, the Templeton guy is the, the four most expensive words in the English language, or this time it's different. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I don't think it's that different. Um, we, we're, we're, we're pretty much the same. We, we, we want to keep it going as long as we can. Uh, and uh, I don't think anything's particularly different this time. It, it certainly doesn't look so on the services numbers. Inflation may be at its lowest level in more than two years, but not low enough for our next guest who sees a recession in the cards to bring prices down even further. Joining us this morning is PIMCO economist Tiffany Wilding. Tiffany, great to see you. Um, talk to me about, uh, I guess, the lag effect that you see playing out. And is that really a second half story? Yeah, so like you mentioned, we do think the second half of this year is going to be a very different picture than the first half, and that's both for inflation and for growth. So we think what really resulted in a more um, you know, persistent inflation, more resilient economy in the first half of this year was the um, increase or the acceleration in, in real incomes as a result of just falling energy prices uh, over the back half of last year. But that is, uh, that's ultimately fading. You also probably had some pent-up demand for services um, just coming out of the pandemic. But we think the second part of this year, you know, looks very different, as I mentioned. We think growth will decelerate in the second part of this year. You have headwinds to consumption from the restart of student loan payments. You know, and by the way, under the surface, credit growth is slowing and slowing quite dramatically. Um, and, and the economy ultimately needs credit to, to run on. And so that will also be a major headwind at a time when monetary policy is very tight. What, what happens to unemployment, do you think, uh, by year end? Yeah, I mean, unemployment is is kind of been notoriously difficult to forecast, uh, you know, this cycle, you know, as a result of, you know, companies wanting to just increase more employees, um, but maybe work them fewer hours. I think there's definitely some secular trends that are changing and in, in how corporate workforces are evolving. You know, but nevertheless, we do think as the economy weakens, you will see unemployment rise. And usually, historically, that rise in unemployment has been characterized by negative quarters of real GDP growth. In other words, you know, we have never seen, uh, you know, in, in the history of, of getting a rise in unemployment without those negative quarters. So we do think you probably will see a recession. You know, and, and the bottom line is, is wages are sticky, even though headline and core inflation measures are coming down. Um, wage inflation probably still will look a little bit stickier. And you probably need some unemployment in order to moderate that fully. So just to play devil's advocate, Tiffany, there's still nine million job openings in this country. We don't have any sort of immigration policy letting people in. And we have so much in the way of, of demand coming, like the infrastructure bill and the CHIPS Act and the American Rescue Plan. That's all still filtering through and, and should, should create a lot of, of demand for projects and for workers next year, shouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right that that stuff is happening under the surface. Um, but it's been one of the reasons why we've suggested that whatever um, recession that we get probably will be um, more more moderate on the more moderate side. You know, we definitely are seeing within the, the government statistics, we're seeing, um, you know, the CHIPS Act, for example, result in, you know, a major acceleration in that kind of manufacturing in the United States. All of this is good news. Um, construction payrolls, for example, haven't fallen um, like we've seen the contraction in residential investment. So, all, yes, all of that is good news, and it will be ultimately um, an economic buffer. You know, but nevertheless, you know, the fact that, that banks, um, you know, we've seen a pretty persistent decline in bank equities just on average in the United States. Obviously, a lot of that is coming from the regional banks. Um, but a 30 percent peak to trough decline, you know, overall in average banks, historically, that's been associated with a recession, a sort of pending recession. You know, so we do think it's still reasonable. Monetary policy is tight. Uh, it's still reasonable to think you probably will get a recession. Um, and, and again, in order for um, inflation, I think, to move back all the way to target, you probably do need to see more unemployment, uh, unemployment rate increase. We're talking about the National Association of Business Economics survey. What are they saying? And they do it every quarter. So, you know, they're on top of it and we can see changes that way. And what they're seeing is that the, the, the pessimism has lessened, I would say. Some of the people are getting so optimistic, but definitely if you look at what they see in their latest July survey, 71% of the economists they surveyed see 50% or less chance of recession. 
Uh, in April, the economists were split evenly on recession odds. So you can see this is a better. It was 50-50, now it's 71%. And in now in July, one in four put the re recession chance at 25% or less. So what are they looking at? They're looking at the fact there's a strong labor market uh, and also inflation's coming down. That's the kind of thing that, make bus that makes businesses do better, feel better. Remember, these are, these are economists. These are chief economists at U.S. companies. And also, they're seeing improved profit margins. So all of this is making them feel like, well, the economy may not be roaring, the Fed may be raising rates, but we are definitely uh, looking at an economy that has a better footing now. And in fact, uh, looks maybe like the survey is suggesting that economists don't see recession now as inevitable as they once did. The soft landing, though, great Bloomberg story today, saying it's going to depend on the Fed's tolerance for inflation. Will the Fed be willing to let inflation stall out around 3% year over year? Will they insist on getting it down to 2% year over year? That's the kind of thing that's going to determine how many more rate hikes there are. And that's the kind of thing that could make the economy, if they have to do more, get weaker. And that's the kind of thing that could raise those recession odds again, Heidi with to a median of three months. Now, Bloomberg Economics says that all the indicators point to a recession in the fourth quarter this year. That's been my base case for several months as well because the consumer is the tailwind here, but we expect the, t the consumer to turn into more of a headwind from around September time as the misery index picks up with CPI picking up again again from base effects and like the unemployment rate picking up. So consumer will slow down. we we'll get the end of the amnesty and student loans. So suddenly the driver of the economy is gonna tail off. So that's what I've called for the fourth quarter for a recession. Bloomberg Economics says that is absolutely the case. The SLU survey, one of the best indicators of recessions, kind of emphasized that this week. So if you expect a recession to come through in the, in the fourth quarter this year, then you'd only be looking for the peak in the stock market from maybe this month, maybe next month, but around this kind of period of time as the most likely period. But remember, it doesn't always turn before the, the recession starts. So a peak in the stock market around September is about right. Maybe July 31st will be the peak. But we shouldn't believe that because the stock market is doing well, that all is wonderful with the world. As we were even kind of teeing up this discussion, where is the recession? Leading economic indicators have fallen over each of the last 14 months, signaling with flashing red lights that economic deterioration is on the horizon. Yet inflation has fallen, labor remained resilient, and the market is rallying. So our fears of recession overblown. We're bringing back in Victoria Fernandez, Crossmark Global Investments Chief Market Strategist. So Victoria, when we think about the mentions that we had seen of recession in the prior earnings season, really kicked off by some of the bank executives here. I I've been doing a command F or control F through some of the releases thus far, and I haven't seen a ton of mentions of recession. Perhaps that'll come forward in some of the call transcripts that are taking place. But it also seems like companies are still investing heavily, and if, if any area that they are, AI has been one that has continued to be kind of that through line talking point. So, so what is keeping a recession at bay right now? Is it AI alone or is it something else out there? Yeah, I don't think we can say it's AI alone, but I will say that when we look at the breadth of the market and where that was a couple months ago versus where we are now, we've seen some, some really strong improvement there, even though it's still those same top seven, top eight names, however you want to categorize them, um, that are leading the market and that are responsible for the majority of the gains that we've seen the breadth is starting to do better. And for us, that's a positive sign. Again, we're still bearish on the market because of all of the other red flags that are out there, but things are starting to look a little bit better. You've seen small caps do a little bit better. So there is a sense of optimism there that perhaps things could start to improve a little bit. I think that's a very intermediate term view. If we look longer term, I think there are these elements that are no longer going to be propping up the economy. So much liquidity, Brad, has been put into the economy over the last year that has really propped things up and I think has masked some of these elements that we typically see these recession indicators has masked that and has buffered the effects of that along with the fact that our economy is different than we were back in 08 and 09. The Fed raising rates does not have the same tightening effect on the consumer and on businesses that it did back then because so many people have locked in lower rate loans, they're fixed rate loans. We don't have near the exposure to adjustable rates as we had a few years ago or as other countries do. 
So structurally, things are a little bit different. We've had the Fed step in immediately after the banking crisis. We've had fiscal stimulus that I mentioned a moment ago. We've had stimulus for the consumer. So you've had these buffers that have kept us from going into the recession that I think ordinarily we would. How long do those buffers last? I think that's the key as to when we see a recession come and how strong or how weak that recession will be. By the way, you know that Thursday, sir, up marks the, uh, the alleged bottom, a year from October of uh, 22. Paul Tudor Jones on Squawk, recession likely, stock market will decline about 12 percent. That's what he offered up today. I mean, I listen to him when he's on because he makes yeah. some really great points um, every time he's on. What about this idea, though? I mean, recession likely, stocks may decline about 12 percent. Yeah, if you, look at, if you look at the market weighted, maybe that happens. But if you look equal weighted, there's a lot of opportunity. We were just talking about, the, the, you know, the small caps and the mid caps. So there's plenty of opportunity at 490 other three stocks. And, and if you get multiple compression and we're right that advertising slows down and you get some multiple compression on the big stocks, uh, you still have other places to play. And that's why being in the index is going to be tough, but you can play around the edges, and I think you can do well. But he's been negative this year, hasn't he? I, I think that for most of this year, no, he's that been doesn't negative. Mean, like, he's an, obviously he's an astute enough in, investor that Correct. if he sees something different, he'll call it differently. Yeah, but the, but the recession. What he's, what he's uh, been, a lot of people were. I understand, been but negative. the recession call is one that many people have made from the beginning of the year, the end of last year, and it hasn't happened, and the likelihood seemed higher over the past couple of months, and now it's coming back down, perhaps again, if we don't get another rate hike. So, and, and you know, the, it's... What, why do we get the recession, right? Are we getting the recession because the Fed went too strong, or are we getting yeah. it because we have a demand issue, right? And so I think that's where we have to kind of say, if, if it's the first, then, you know, you could be down 12 percent. And the other side... Yeah, I don't think it is. Only so, bring it up because, yeah. again, you're two days away from the one-year anniversary, Jim. Of, of the October bottom uh, in an environment where, you know, not everybody is on the same page suggesting, well, we're good and we're going to have a soft landing. There are, you know, a number yeah. of people who still think, well, that was a bottom, probably wasn't the bottom because this whole thing has not been a new bull market. It's been a bear market bounce. So there, there's a lot, a lot of voices on I, that. Yeah. So let's start boat. with this. I'm glad there is a wide array, array of thoughts. I worry when everybody's on the same page, That's which, true. by the way, at the beginning of this year, everybody. I mean, remember how many people had their models saying 100 percent chance of recession? That's ridiculous. Anybody who walks in your office and says they're 100 percent certain of anything in the future, just throw them out of your office. But back to the bigger point, go back a year ago, right? If a year ago any of us said that we're not going to be in a recession, any of us besides me, sorry, I am going to pat myself on the back on this. Any of us said we're not going to be in don't a recession a year from I'm now. Gonna, I'm going to pat you too, because don't you. hurt yourself. You know, but no, people were punching. <laughs> me in the face on this, right? I mean, with, here's the thing. That decline last year was predicated on a recession this year that simply didn't happen. So the market should be up. And as we look at the economy right now, I'll pick a statistic that matters to me. 200,000 for weekly jobless claims. This economy is not close to recession. As for the risks, and of course I respect Mr. Tudor Jones, but we could take a look at, you know, resumption of student loan payments or inflation or whatever. There are always risks, folks. You've got to ask what's priced in the market. The market's a lot cheaper than it was two months ago. And you know what's not priced into this market still is the possibility that we have a nice soft landing and just keep keep growing our economy. All right. So uh, I take some comfort in that. I also take comfort in the fact that uh, you have two job openings for every job seeker. People will say that recessions don't start with a booming economy. That's not true. Recessions always start with an economy that's been booming. <laughs> It's the nature of the peak and the rolling over. So I view the uh, coming year as one where the bond market is signaling caution. The stock market is shrugging off a lot of that. And uh, in any given year, the normal risk of recession or bear market is about 20 percent. For the coming year, I'd say it's about 50-50.
disasters. Bears have a lot to gain in predicting disaster. There is money in betting that the world is going to explode. But the economy is not there right now. This is a Goldilocks economy. It isn't too hot with too much inflation and too much growth. And it's also not too cold with losing jobs and collapsing industry. Things are okay on average. They might not feel great all the time, but the data should speak louder than the bears.